boys and girls. I'm Miss Dirter from the Winterville Library. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm reading one of my favorite stories ever. It's my favorite story for many reasons because it's about books and animals and art. It's called Waiting for the Biblioboro. Esperando el Biblioboro. It was written by Monica Brown, and the illustrations that are so beautiful are by John Parra. This book was published by Tricycle Press, which is a division of Random House, and we have permission from Random House. That right there is a burrow like a donkey. I want to tell you that this story is written in English and Spanish. So today, I'm just going to read the English part. But if you would like to read the Spanish part, we have this book at our library, and you can check it out. Here we go. On a hill behind a tree, there is a house. In the house, there is a bed, and on the bed, there is a little girl named Anna, fast asleep, dreaming about the world outside and beyond the hill. There she is. When Anna wakes up to the roosters, kikiriki. Pappy is already at work on the farm and Mammy is busy in the garden. Anna bathes her little brother and feeds the goats and collects the eggs to sell at market. Look at those rays of the sun. Isn't that beautiful? After breakfast, Anna and her mother walk down the hill. Anna closes her eyes against the sun and wishes she was back in the cool of the house with her libro, her book. Anna has read her book her only book so many times she knows it by heart. The book was a gift from her teacher for working so hard on her reading and writing. But last fall, her teacher moved far away and now there is no one to teach Anna and the other children in her village. Here's Anna reading and thinking about her teacher. So at night, on her bed in the house on the hill, Anna makes up her own cuentos and tells the stories to her little brother to help him fall asleep. She tells him stories about make-believe creatures that live in the forest and the mountains and the sea. She wishes for new stories to read, but her teacher with the books has gone. So here's Anna reading to her little brother And here are all the creatures that she t tells him about. Did you see the one hiding in the tree trunk? One morning, Anna wakes up to the sounds of tack a -tack clip-clop, and a loud ee-aw, ee-aw. When Anna looks down the hill below her house, she sees a man with a sign that reads Biblioboro. With the man, there are two burrows, 
What are they carrying? Libros, books. Hannah runs down the hill to the man with the sign and the burrows and the books. Other children run to him too, skipping down hills and stomping through the fields. Here he comes. you? Who are they? The children ask. The man says, I am a librarian, a bibliotecario. These are my burrows, Alpha and Beto. Welcome to the Biblio Burrow, my biblioteca, which is a library. Biblio means books, and you know what the burrows are. So it's like a library on the burrows. But, Senor, Anna says, I thought libraries were only in big cities and buildings. Not this one, says the librarian. This is a moving library. Then he spreads out his books and invites the children to join him under a tree. Once upon a time, the librarian begins sharing the story of an elephant who swings from a spider's web. He reads from books with beautiful pictures, then helps the little ones learn the abecedario, which is an alphabet. He sings A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Finally, he says, now it's your turn. Pick up books, and in a few weeks I will be back to collect them and bring you new ones. Me too, asks Anna. Especially you, says the librarian with a smile. So many cuentos. While Alpha and Beto chomp the sweet grass under the tree, Anna picks up book after book and finds pink dolphins and blue butterflies, castles and fairies, talking lions and magic carpets, tantos, cuentos, so many stories. Look at all these pictures of the story. Do you see the pink magic carpet? Hannah pretending she's on the carpet. Someone should write a story about your burrows, Anna tells the librarian, rubbing Alpha's nose and feeding more grass to Beto. Why don't you, he asks. Then he packs up the books and is off. Enjoy, he tells the children. I will be back. Anna runs up the hill to her house, hugging the books to her chest. She can't wait to share her books with her brother. And that night, she reads until she can't keep her eyes open any longer. Each morning, Anna does her chores and reads and looks out her window. She listens for the sounds of Alpha and Beto, but weeks pass and the librarian doesn't return. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who smiles and says, Go read, Anna. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who smiles and says, Go draw, Anna. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who smiles and says, Go write, Anna. When will he come back? 
she asks her mother, who finally says, Go to bed, Anna. All these days pass. One night, Anna dreams she is flying over her country on a butterfly's back. In her dream, she crosses mountains and oceans and rivers and jungles, bringing stories everywhere she goes. Stories fly from her mouth and fingers like magic, falling into the hands of the children waiting below. There she is in her dream. When Anna wakes up, she misses Alpha and Beto and the Biblioboros books. She remembers that the librarian told her that she could write a book. And so, with paper and string and colored pencils, she does. Finally, just when Anna thinks she'll never see the Biblioboro again, she wakes up to Ee-haw, ee, -haw, ee -haw, and children yelling. She runs down the hill with her library books and a special surprise of her very own. I wrote this cuento for you, she says. Que bueno, the librarian says. And then he reads her story to the children under the tree. Did you see the little chicks and the rooster? That's not a rooster, that's a hen. Pardon me. So much to see in these pictures. When it's time to go, Anna's book is packed carefully on the burrow's back, ready to be carried away over the hills and through the fields to another child. Carried to another child who is asleep on a bed in a house on a hill behind a tree, dreaming of Alpha and Beto and all the new stories the Biblioboro will bring. Dreaming and dreaming. Let me read to you what it says on the back of this book. It's a quote. My hope is to instill good values and imagination in children so that they can dream and create a better world. So said Luis, Sariano, Bojorquez, the librarian who started the Biblioboro Foundation. So you see, this is not just a story, it's based on a true story. Remember, you can check this out at Wonderful Library. Hope to see you soon. Bye.